Okay, so basically Nissan got 2016 Maximas in. And uh, in the pictures, these things look horrifically ugly. But uh, looking at this thing a little bit closer, it looks like they didn't know whether to copy off of the BMW i8. I mean, look, what the fuck is this bullshit? Look at the C-pillar. Where'd they get, where the hell did they design this thing from? There's a car seat in the thing. So uh, I'm gonna take one of these things out for a run. But uh, I'm looking at this thing, and frankly, I, I didn't really hate the Maxima until I actually rented one. And when I rented one on vacation, that made me really not like the thing because my knee was like right up into the center panel. Now granted, I'm a tall guy, but the thing about it is that the way they had designed the car, the engine power, I was very disappointed with it. But um, so this is what one of these things looks like. And, and so far there's been a lot of uh, reviews about them. You know, I've seen a lot of reviews online and everything. But uh, I mean, you know, I, I think these colors are really not right for it. Like, you, you look at all this, like, you look really closely at the work that they've done with these things. I think these colors, like gray, I think what they need is they need brighter uh, neonic color. Like, for instance, the BMW i8 comes with a blue and a white color scheme that allows you to actually differentiate all of the panels really easily so when you get to that c quarter when you get to that c panel right here it doesn't look weird it just looks futuristic this kind of doesn't look futuristic this looks budget you know interior feel you know the padding has gotten a lot better it's like the interiors on these things have gotten a little bit better i can see the seats the uh, center transmission tunnel is pretty high, so it kind of bunkerizes the interior just a little bit. But it, it looks overall, it looks pretty good. My thing about Nissan is, knowing that the GTR sold so well, why haven't they made one of these things with all-wheel drive? And uh, why do they force you to go to the Infiniti? It's like, they should make Nissan Maximas with all-wheel drive and powerful engines. If not a V8, they should do a twin-turbo V6. So this is... $38,125. $38,125. And it seems that this comes with pretty much everything. Navigation, this, that, and other. Okay, so let's look at the top of the line Nissan Maxima 2016. This is a Nissan Maxima Platinum. I was arguing with someone about what's a better buy, a Nissan Maxima or a Hyundai Genesis. The Hyundai Genesis starts at $38,000. Meanwhile, it starts at $38,000, but this car is $40,905, where it had a base retail price of $39,000. So this one comes with navigation, eight-way driver's seat, power lumbar, uh, the so-called zero-gravity front seats, and Sirius, and all the typical things you expect to find. Now, this is $40,905. The wheels on this model, uh, these wheels right here these are 245 45 r18 okay so that's the wheels in the platinum and other than that it's it's pretty much like you know it's the straightforward nissan maxima it's just that it has every single feature and it ends at forty one thousand dollars if you want to round up so the, the genesis hyundai you know they always are willing to deal with you and everything the difference between the hyundai genesis and the nissan maxima is the hyundai genesis is a bigger car the back seat in the Hyundai Genesis is a little bit longer. And um, the front seats also offer more space. So some people would tell me, oh, well, you can't compare those two cars because the Maxima ends where the Genesis starts. But my thing is, if you're leasing one of these cars instead of just doing the finance, there are ways to work the numbers so that you can pretty much um, get exactly out of a Maxima what you want out of a Genesis and Hyundai will make deals with you. Now, I'm not here selling Hyundais to you because, quite frankly, I'd rather have a brand new Dodge Charger. But uh, let's say I abandon the uh, bias for Chrysler products, and let's say we only talk about the imports. Like Cadillac, they have this uh, squeeze and pull out thigh cushion, so it looks like they've uh, taken a look at a lot of the uh, 
uh, industry leaders and they've tried to get better looking seats. The only downside is this is not motorized. If you're going to have designs like this, you need to have a motorized. Hyundai does it in, um, you know, some of their cars that offer seats like this. And Mercedes Benz also does it in their C class, especially with the uh, power headrests. You know, if you want to make racing type sport seats, that's what you need to do. You need to make the whole thing motorized so this way um, you can quickly adjust it you know without really having to do any manual movements beyond just you know touching a button so this is what the cockpit of a platinum looks like and it's all black so you know it's a pretty simple straightforward there's no colorful designs in here or anything just we'll just look over the key strokes of the car so this is what the interior looks like the interior materials feel pretty good they feel pretty sturdy some people i know complain about uh ultimas and i've driven a maxima i made a video about the last maxima if you look through my uh videos but um this is what the uh, seat looks back now i'm gonna show you how much space is there if i sit in it but uh if i put it all the way back and i tilt it a little the way i would sit naturally there's uh there's that much space in the back and that's a decent amount of leg space if you've got kids or teenagers but the thing about the Genesis is for a little bit more money the Genesis gives you a larger back seat in fact the Genesis back seat is larger than the Dodge Charger and the Chrysler 300's back seat which um, you know I, hopefully the Charger and the 300 will get bigger when they redesign them but uh, that's something worth considering if you need a larger back seat let's look at the uh, trunk Let's look at the trunk. So how do we open this? Trunk button is here. Okay. And we can look in the trunk and see how much space is there. But um, while I'm at it, let's just talk a little bit about the interior as well. The interior, similar to the last one, this has a power telescoping steering wheel, but keep in mind, this is the top of the level. This is the plat. Power telescoping steering wheel right there. Um, everything's to build track is right there. That's to turn your electronic stability control on and off. That's the trunk button, obviously, heated steering wheel, up and down power rear sunshade. There was a Maxima that I did a video review about because uh, one of my girlfriends had a Maxima and I did a video review when she was trying to buy another one. I think it was a 2011. And they had a rear seat package in this uh, armrest and it was the coolest thing I had ever seen in the Maxima. And she really liked the Maxima, but she ended up going with a TL and the problem is the TL didn't come with all the features that the Maxima came with. So for Maxima lovers, yeah, these cars are pretty feature rich and but thus far the only um foreign import that gives you more features at around the exact same price is hyundai and hyundai offers more features if you take a look at the hyundai zara or the hyundai genesis you'll find more features you'll find cooler key luxury features i guess this car would be more better compared to the azara than the genesis but me personally if you're going to talk about a top of the line car i would say compare this to the genesis and yeah the genesis is more expensive but for the money that you pay for let's say the four or five thousand dollars more you pay you get so much more so these are dual memory seats options for the driver and passenger. As you can see, this is the uh, trip computer if you so use it. And uh, basically, um, you've got uh, you know automatic transmissions. A lot of people would prefer to have a manual, but that's just not going to happen anymore. You know, manuals. You, you've got a lot of people who are injured in combat, coming back from the war. You've got a lot of people who use one car as their primary car for the whole family. Everybody needs to be able to drive it. Not everybody's going to learn manual. So you have normal and sport driving buttons here. This is for the new interface. You have dual USB chargers right here, and it has a nice deep cubby. I can get my whole hand in this, and so that means you can actually put your entire phone in there auxiliary jack is there so basically you can put a music player in there and you can just close it up and uh, it's pretty deep so um you know it won't get in your way at all the wire won't get in your way so that's actually pretty intelligent i like that there's a lot of things about the interior of this car i like a lot of things about the interior of this car i like um you know deep glove box that's pretty nice home link system in the mara it has a dual panoramic sunroof, if you can see that. Dual panoramic sunroof. You know? Okay, so you got one sunroof here, and you, well, basically it's what you know. It's a, there's a cover, and it slides in towards the center. 
and um, basically that gives you that ultra view panel where you can have your passengers see out of the car so um you know my cars have that too but it, it's pretty much a standard feature now um if, if you're getting you know a car that's entry luxury and whatever but um other than that i mean it's a really nice interior it's very stylish lighter colors are always better than these really dark colors because it helps the cabin feel airier but um this is what the dark optioned platinum model looks like so this is pretty uh it's pretty interesting i like it I, I like it it's not that bad the only question is how does it drive which i'm going to do later and find out how does that cvt handle buttons feel good yeah, the buttons are pretty cool pretty much straightforward stuff but uh this is definitely a good upgrade over the last maxima the only problem some people are going to have a, a issue with is the styling which I think has gotten very radical because a lot of the cues in this car are very similar to the BMW i8 in my opinion. And uh, some people might be attracted to it, some people might not be. Sticker on a Nissan Maxima SV. As you can see, leather seats. This is more of a base model, the SV. Um, 34,390 is your start price. 35,625 is the total sticker price. So this is really more of a base model. These are the wheels on this SV, on this SV. I know you can, you have some wheel options. This is a blue paint scheme. So obviously all the cool features that you would have gotten in the Platinum are missing. All the really interesting stuff. And you know, this, this C pillar, I just don't see where they could have gotten the idea for this other than the BMW i8. You know, they, maybe they style it up to something else, but I think that C pillar, this, if you want to call it a D pillar, I just think that looks weird considering this isn't a hatchback. The trunk begins right here and the contour line from the trunk. Don't, I, I don't see the point of that, but I guess they did that because they want to have its own character and whatnot. So if that's what they do with their styling now, then I guess that's just what it is. This actually has the navigation system and it also has a rear view camera but pretty much it looks like yeah it comes with all that uh stuff from the platinum it's just that it has a few a little bit less than the platinum had obviously so this is the sv list you can look at it yourself i'll just let you see it so it comes with all the standard features and the only add-ons that it shows the options included by the manufacturer the splash guards the floor mats trunk mat trunk net and that's where you get the $35,000 price from but other than that this car is actually highly equipped now it has pretty much what looks at first glance to be the same exact interior but when you look closer you don't see those two buttons right there so as you look closer you start to see some features missing you know but um this one also as you can see does not have the panoramic sunroof. So those are just some things that you definitely wanna get in order to feel like you actually have a real luxury car. Because a panoramic sunroof and a navigation system, they go a long way to making you feel like you have a luxury car. Almost as far as leather seats do. But so, you know, some people don't really like leather seats, but um, I do. And as for the uh, styling, this i don't even know how to describe this it looks like it looks like a bull's face kind of it looks like a looks like the approach the word that comes to my mind when i see the front of this is taurus it looks to me like a bull so basically i'm driving this white nissan maxima platinum and as you can see it has a tan interior fully loaded it's got uh you know, relatively nice wheels. They're nice and stylish. I've seen worse. They're actually pretty nice. You know, with, with a car like this, you almost want to have, you know, darker silver wheels or whatever. Because when you have darker wheels, it kind of makes it look more aggressive. But some people like bright, shiny chrome. But um, it's a lovely car. My only thing about it is I don't see the point of this. Um, I guess you could call it D pillar, but really it's, it's above the trunk. And I kind of don't see the point of that because that only really looks cool if you have a sport back like the audi a7 where this entire thing goes up because it makes you know what would have normally been normal look you know special outstanding but uh, other than that the ground effects for the side skirt look pretty good it's a it's a very very good looking car you know when people see this they're gonna say oh wow that's a luxury car you know and that's what you want people to say you want people to say yeah you got a luxury car and um 
obviously you have these manual thigh cushions or I, I call them waterfall cushions but as you can see above the SV you have a heated seat and the pull down sunshade yeah, so mm -hmm. but um, it if you are a current Maxima owner well what does your car look like your car doesn't look as good as this and that's the whole point of psychological obsolescence it's to make you see something that you like wow that thing's incredible I want to get that because it has so many more features than my car the character lines on this new car some people are gonna like them some people don't as you can see this is the new one that's the old one I remember when this car first came out they were talking they called those fish hook eyes and everything the styling of that car kind of grew on me but um, this new one it's like that 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 nose looks like it looks like a Taurus symbol like a bull or something those are like bull horns that's what that looks like to me it looks like they've gone away from fish and they've gone towards bulls that's what it really looks like but um, the 2013 and as you know I made a video about one when I rented it on vacation but the 2013 simply has an interior that's nothing nothing like the new one the new one screams luxurious so anybody who actually loves Maximas and swears by their Maxima this is gonna impress them in numerous numerous ways the worst thing about this new Nissan Maxima is the fact that Nissan doesn't have the balls to put in the kind of power that they have in the Nissan GTR or at least a twin turbo V6 with all-wheel drive it's a shame that the Maxima doesn't offer all-wheel drive because so many new cars are offering all-wheel drive under $40,000, such as the Chrysler 200. And uh, under $40,000, you get interiors that look this good, and this is a very, very good-looking interior. But um, unfortunately, you're stuck with a you know, front-wheel drive uh, V6, and you're stuck with um, a CVT. And the thing about it is Nissan has designed the CVT with a sport mode that tries to mimic the shifting uh, jerks of an actual, you know, traditional tr transmission. But uh, when you actually drive it, it kind of feels artificial. It just doesn't feel exactly like you expect a transmission to be. Under 4 more than 25 miles from current location. So, the Nissan Maxima tells me that there's a thunderstorm warning. 25 miles away from here. That's interesting, right? That's pretty cool. So there's a thunderstorm warning. I'll push OK. Thank you for telling me about the thunderstorm. Now I know. Got side view indicators. That's cool. Navigation system runs through this. I'm going to try to turn it sideways. Hopefully I can capture all that. But uh, yeah, you drag it and this, that, and other. But the beautiful thing is that the jog dial system is supplemented with a touch screen. You always want to have a touch screen. The Germans refuse to give you a touch screen, but the touch screen is important because it creates system redundancy. I can speak my commands here, I can touch my commands there, and I can jog dial my commands here. What more could you want? So we're going to put it in sport mode. I'm going to turn these cooled seats up, so I'm going to cool my ass. And then, um, what else? We're going to put this bad boy into drive and driver. Look how much space is back there. It's pretty cool, actually. I'm, I'm actually very, I'm liking the, the fresh new colors and the soft night. The colors really help this car feel better. Look at that, look at that up there. This is actually a really, really nice car, as long as you get in bright colors. This is really a nice car. Cheap, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Not bad. Here's a question. What kind of warranty do they have on the transmission? Because one of the Maximas that we had, we had to replace five the transmission. Year, uh, five years, 60. It was like $3,500. Five years, 60. Five years, 60. Yeah, you know, it's been around when I got a Canon. Okay. I'll do it up there. Thanks to a far higher quality interior, I actually enjoyed the Nissan Maxima more than I expected I would. The car comes with a lot of technological tricks such as a CVT that tries to mimic an automatic transmission. That right there is going to get it criticism from many and it's going to get it praise from others who, you know, some people really like Maxima and they prefer to rebuy Maxima each and every time there's a model restyle. If that's the case, then they're definitely going to like this car more than the outgoing Maxima. 
the interior is probably the best executed that I've seen from Nissan, including the Nissan GTR. The road feel is also something to be concerned about. It's actually extremely comfortable on the road. It handles bumps very well. My only thing is, on very, very long drives, the drone of the engine and the feel of the car can become boring to some. I wish they'd put the uh, Nissan GTRs, uh, <laughs> they, if they would do that, then boy, man. <laughs> yeah, this thing would be oh, But you know what? It would sell. It's not about, yeah. it's not about, uh, yeah. they should have a moving object attention. Moving object? Yeah. If you put that Nissan GTR technology in this thing, you could sell this thing at about $80,000, maybe more. <laughs> Make a 500 horsepower twin turbo V6. Nice, all-wheel drive because all people really want is they want a car with four doors that's fast or and not even if it's not fast they just want a lot of you know power you know? Yeah, that's all and that's why that GTR I know you sell them not every single one yeah, they, you sell them. Nice. yeah have you driven no I have never yeah, the thing's, I've, the thing's I've driven it but not you know fast it's terrifying that, that, 545 miles. it's terrifying Terrifying. One of my friends has one. Oh, wheel drive. Oh, I'm scared for his life when he goes out driving that thing. I was just that. That all wheel drive makes it a monster. All wheel drive makes everything a monster. Yeah, yep. Everything's a monster with all wheel drive. Yeah, ripped on the uh, steering wheel. Yeah, I noticed that. All everybody has these contoured, contoured um, steering wheels now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, muscle. <laughs> this is it's nice. This is really nice. It's got a decent good good amount of legroom too. And that's great. Does it do you have sensors up there or are you okay? You okay? Alright. Because I I could move it back. Okay. So, I'm actually very impressed. This feels more like a premium product than it did in the one that I rented and made the video about last time. This feels like a really good premium product. And by the way, this was a $41,000 model with the uh, light tan interior and uh, those wheels right there, but obviously, uh, yeah. The um, engine sounds, the engine power, it's a lot like what you experienced in the last one, but uh, definitely everything's been refined. My only question is how long are those CVTs gonna last?